Hi, are you someone who is interested in getting started with running but you are not sure how to get started, what are the different protocols to follow, what should you be mindful of? In fact, I see many people who are very interested in running because running is an excellent sport, running is an excellent activity and oftentimes I see people getting addicted to running. Once you start running, it's very difficult to stop uh, running as well because it gives you a runner's high. Uh, however, many people are not sure how to get started, they feel in, uh, they do not feel confident, they have a fear of injuring themselves and many people are just not clear how to get started. If you are one of those, then today's session is for you. Hi, I am Ruma, I am a certified fitness trainer, nutritionist, women's fitness specialist as well as specialist in exercise therapy from International Sports and Sciences Academy USA and National Academy of Sports Medicine USA. And in today's session, I'll explain to you all the things that you need to know before you get started on running. If you're someone who is fearful of running, today is when you will break your fear as well. So let's get started. Number one consideration is weight. If your BMI is above 30, then you should you should delay your running uh, delay your running till the time you get to a BMI of below 30. So what is, uh, what is BMI? BMI is nothing but an indicator of whether you are overweight, right weight, underweight. Uh, BMI is an indicator of that. Um, and how do you calculate BMI? BMI is very simple to calculate. Just uh, divide your weight in kgs by your height in meter twice. So divide your weight twice by your height in meters. That's it. And that will be your BMI. If you are above 30, then then delay your running uh, till you know everything that you need to do uh, before that. So if you're above 30 then start on weight loss, uh, healthful weight loss so you get rid of your fat and build your uh, muscle percentage. That is how you should get started. Uh, second is, um, second is I get the right kind of shoes. You need a shoe which has a very good shock absorption. Um, and some of the good brands are Nike, Adidas, Asics. Now, I'm not a promoter of any of these brands. These are the brands I personally use for myself and they have given me great results. And these are the brands that Navitai members are using and they are seeing, um, you know, very, you know, these are good quality products. Now, once you have the right shoe and there are different technologies as well for shock absorption. For example, there is Nike Air technology, Nike Bubble technology. So look for the right kind of technology which will match your running pace and speed. As long as it is good shock absorption, that is what you need in a shoe. Second one is invest in shock absorption pad. These are Tynor shock absorption pad. You will get these on Amazon as well. And these sit right under your feet and and the sole of the shoe. Uh, these are great for shock absorption as well. Especially if you're overweight and you're trying to run, it puts a lot of pressure on your knees, your back and your ankles. And in order to prevent injury, you need all of these shock absorption uh, tools or mechanisms. Number, uh, the next one that needs to be, you need to be mindful of before you start running, Work on strengthening your legs as your core and your glute muscles. So what is core? Core is this entire band which is your you know, the abdominal area, the entire band around your abdominal area. The next set of muscles to work on and this gives you stability uh, when you are running. Sometimes you will run on uneven surfaces and I see many people tripping and falling if they do not have very good core stability. So you need to work on this as well, your core strength which will impart you stability when you are running so that you will not fall. The next one is your glute muscles which are, uh, which are you know, the muscles of your hips, muscles of your quadriceps, muscles of your hamstrings, so the thigh muscles, the muscles right behind your thighs, calf muscles as well as your IT band. IT band is a strip of uh, you know, fascia muscle which connects your knee to your glutes. And that needs to be strong as well as flexible for you to avoid any injury during running. And right below this, uh, right below this video, which is going on the session, which is going on right now, you will get a link of leg strengthening exercises. Please work on those for at least two to three weeks before you embark on your running journey. 
The next, con uh, the next consideration, oh, and yes, let me also tell you that I have been a victim of injury because I started running prematurely. See, running is a very easy sport, right? You just need a pair of shoes and a good, uh, good condition outside and you can start running. It does not need any equipment. It does not need a gym. You do not have to be dependent on anyone. It, it is a very um, easy sport to pick up. Let me put it that way. And it is also a sport when you do, you feel a, uh, you feel a great a sense of achievement inside of you and that gets you addicted and I did the same when I started when I started on my fitness journey I started with running and very soon within six months my knees were gone I had a petrolofemoral injury so in order to avoid that we need to start with leg strengthening and core strengthening exercises first before you embark on your running journey and also remember when I got into my injury, I was not having any, uh, you know, I was not overweight. I was almost the correct weight. I was not over the weight of uh, 30 BMI. It was just that my legs were not strong enough to support me during my run. So please do not make the mistake that I have made. You have the information, you have the knowledge, you have the awareness which I'm sharing with you in this session. So take due care and you will enjoy this sport. And the last one, it's a little advanced uh, a little advanced thought but uh, another thing that you should be mindful of is your target heart rate so your maximal heart rate is 220 minus your age that is your maximum heart rate when you're running your maximum heart rate should not exceed 80 percent of your maximal heart rate so if your maximal heart rate after 220 minus 45 it comes to say 150 just saying giving you an example uh, just 80% of that will become your target heart rate. So do not let your heart rate go beyond the target heart rate when you are running. And also be mindful of recovery. It is a little more advanced concept, uh, but I'll, for the scope of this uh, session, I'll just keep it, uh, keep it here. Uh, so just look after your maximum target and your, uh, and your recovery, uh, recovery rates. All right. I hope you found this uh, session valuable. Uh, because this will help you uh, oh and the last one sorry i missed if you're someone who is scared oh Ruma, i've never ra ran before how do i get started very simple easy tip you're used to walking right so continue your walking you know be consistent for walking for at least two weeks 30 minutes every day for two weeks on the third week after every hundred steps you incorporate two to three steps of jogging and it can be just a mild jog it doesn't have to be a fast run a mild jog for your body to get used to the experience of running when one feet is above ground and another feet is on the ground your body needs to experience that feeling give it 24 hours for that feeling to settle into your mind sleep well so that your um, you know the neuron connections are bending through the night through your rem sleep where your body is uh, uh, where your body is forming the memory of this feeling this experience so give it 24 hours get back to 10 steps again and with every run try to see if you can increase the number of jogging steps but after every 100 steps of walking make it 10 to 15 jog steps 15 to 20 jog steps 20 to 25 jog steps and over a period of time you should target after a month you should target one two minutes of uh, uh, two minutes of walk uh, one minute of run, two minutes of walk, one minute of run. See if you can achieve that in the next one. I hope you found this uh, session uh, interesting and valuable. Uh, I would uh, love to see your feedback and thought in the uh, in the comment box below. And if you are someone who is looking to get back in shape, get fitter, healthier, and happier, please do join our free masterclass, and I'll be able to share more in-depth knowledge and details with you. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.